Hello and welcome to episode 15 of Mouse's Makes where I will probably spend the entire time moaning about how hot I am. I'm very hot. It's been about 30 degrees here for the last few days and I am not built for the heat. When the good Lord put me together he said give this one pale skin, freckles and a heat intolerance. My bedroom, when I go up to bed at night, it's around 30 degrees in my bedroom with all the doors and windows open and a fan and everything. Um, when I wake up in the morning, it's a chilly 26. But yeah, it's, I know lots of you watching this have hot weather in your own home countries, some of you in England at the moment. And Wales, I know Wales is very hot too. However, I did not choose to live in a hot country. A hot country has been forced upon me and I am, I'm writing a complaint to somebody, I don't know who. I'm very hot, I'm very grumpy. I have hot weather. I'm a lady of a certain age so I have hot flushes. And my thyroid is hideously overactive which is making me overly hot as well. I've got the triple whammy. It does not make for a happy Mandy. So that's why I probably look a little bit less put together than I normally do. My t-shirt is wrinkly. Don't care. My fringe, which I normally try and straighten, got damp in the shower and is curling. Too hot to care. I have, however, put on a bra purely for your benefit. If we make it to the end of the recording without it coming off, we're doing well. All last year, I wore those stretchy, stretchy kind of nylon-y thing. Well, they're not nylon. I don't know the name of the grumpy, see? I wore those rather than bras because who went out anywhere? I certainly didn't. And then when you come to put on a proper bra again, it's really uncomfortable. And... I can't get the stretchy things on because I don't want to say I'm too sweaty because my mother said ladies shouldn't say that they're sweaty. Let's just say I'm glowing an awful lot at the moment. So consequently, I've not done a great deal of knitting. I'll show you my knitting that I have done in a minute. But, and I meant to start with this, but then I went off on a little hot rant. Um, obviously, you may have noticed, you may not have, there was no podcast last week because we had, well, a staycation, I think they call it. My husband had a week and a bit off work, so um, we went and we saw some friends and what have you. Um, the day after I saw you, well, you saw me, I don't know why I say I saw you, I can't see you. Um, the day after I recorded last, I had my usual uh, kidney consultant appointment and things there are going pretty well, touch wood. Everything's stable. I seem to be currently in remission from my disease being active, which is great because it means no more damage is being done. The damage that has been done is still there, so I've still lost quite a lot of kidney tissue. But the longer I can stay stable, the longer we can avoid um, dialysis and transplant, the better. So nobody knows how long it'll last. Could last forever. Could be next month. We don't know. Um, so you just don't worry about it, really. But I've been having a lot of symptoms and I shared them with him because he's lovely. He really is lovely. Um, I was wearing uh, one of my motorbike t-shirts and it's got a picture of a rocket which is a Triumph motorbike, Triumph rocket, huge thing, two and a half litre engine, enormous thing. I'd love one but my legs are too short to even go across it, let alone reach the floor either side. Um, so I was wearing that and it says rocket girl on it and he came out and he saw me in the waiting room. Even though I've got a mask on, he recognises me and he goes, come on rocket girl. He's just really nice. So I told him about all these symptoms I was, I was having and he said, well, let's um, 
do some extra blood tests. And he rang me a few days later and said, right, you've got thyrotoxicosis, um, which I suspected. I've had an overactive thyroid before. Uh, it's always been stress induced and he thinks it's another autoimmune disorder. So my kidney condition is an autoimmune disorder, which was kicked off by excessive stress. Um, and he thinks this is the same. So, yeah, I won't go into all the ins and outs of trying to get tablets out of my GP. GP's fine, the receptionist. Sorry, that's the sound of me slapping my knees in agitation. I'm going to stop doing that because you're probably thinking, what the hell is that noise? <sighs> yeah, so anyway, on medication, book an appointment with the endocrinologist, she said. So I booked an appointment. The earliest one I could get is for November. And then I got a letter two days later saying, we've cancelled your appointment and put you back on the waiting list. So who knows when I'll see them. But it doesn't really matter. GP's on top of it with blood tests and medication. So what else can they do? They might want to take my thyroid out. Though I, you can probably see I haven't got a goiter or anything. This is just, this is steroid chub so yeah so that was thursday really friday it was my eldest son's birthday he turned 29 how old do i feel um and his fiance had organized she's been doing it for months a surprise barbecue for his birthday obviously we didn't know what restrictions were going to be like so Everybody kind of got invited at the last minute, I think. But so on the he was working late shift on his birthday, so um, I don't know why, but I got it into my head. If we didn't go up and see him in the morning, he'd be suspicious that there was something going on. And apparently, he was suspicious there was something going on, but he thought it was for the for Saturday morning because she'd asked him not to do overtime and not to book the gym and what have you. So he thought. Something was going on on Saturday morning. Um, so we went up to see him in the morning, took him his presents. Uh, my husband had made him a bench, garden bench, because they haven't got any garden furniture at their, their house. And they've just been working on the garden. They've had it turfed and they've done lots of work out there. Um, in fact, my eldest son, big butch, bearded biker, tattoos, terrified of frogs and when they bought the house there was a pond in the garden so he took the first thing he did was take the pond out can't have any frogs um, but he left the pond liner in the garden and of course the frogs came back and laid frog spawn in the rainwater that gathered in the pond liner and frogs keep coming back and he has to keep getting rid of this frog spawn if they lay it anywhere anywhere there's water they will Every summer we get, does anybody want any frogs born? It's very funny. When he was a teenager, we had a little toad that lived somewhere outside our back door. And we called it Toadie, we loved it. But if he went out on his bicycle, I had to go out first and check Toadie was nowhere about so he could come out. I shouldn't laugh because I'm much the same about spiders, but yeah. So... Yeah, we went up, we gave him his bench. Um, his brother and I gave him some money for it towards a tattoo he's having done in August. Um, and then we came away, he went to work. My husband went back up when the, the coast was clear um, and helped his fiance Lauren sort everything out. Um, there was a bit more gardening she wanted to do, did that. Her dad came over and um, her dad had been storing all the food. Her dad's quite chefy. I think he was a chef at some point. And he took over the barbecue. There was so much food. Um, oh, Sorry, it's just come up on my phone. Liverpool's been stripped of its World Heritage status by UNESCO. I don't know why. I'm sorry to come to you with half a story, but that's what distracted me there. It just flashed up. Um, yeah, so 
we all gathered. He should have been home from work just after six and we waited and we waited and he didn't turn up. And my husband started saying, do you think he's gone down to the coast? Do you think he's got a strop on because he thinks everyone's forgotten his birthday? And eventually, at about, oh, I don't know, 20 to 7, he strolled in and he'd, he'd gone to Tesco's. He'd been wandering around Tesco's, feeling sorry for himself, I think, though he didn't say so. Um, yeah. So he walked in and his garden was full of people. And then he had to go and have a shower and leave us all to it for another 20 minutes. But it was good. It was a good night. It wasn't hot. Unfortunately, we could have done with it being hot because we were all out in the garden till about 11 o'clock at night. And I was, by 8 o'clock, I was wrapped in blankets and everything. Not only can I not stand the heat, but I don't seem to be able to control my body temperature. So when, when everyone else is saying, oh, it's a bit chilly, I'm blue literally blue so yeah so that was a good night and then the next day we had him his fiance his dad who's my first husband and his dad's girlfriend all came around for brunch they live in London and they'd come down for the party so we had them all around for brunch we have a good relationship my ex-husband and I he and my husband are friends and you know there's no point I mean, yes, I can understand if there's been some kind of abusive situation you don't want to be doing, but we took the decision, and it was our decision, and I'm not saying anybody who's done anything otherwise is wrong, but we took the decision that for Peter's sake, we needed to stay friends, because Peter has two families. He has my family, and he has his dad's family, and... There was no reason why he needed to be punished by not seeing his dad or not seeing his dad's family. We've always gone out of our way to act as one big family for Peter. Um, so yeah, they came round, they stayed till about half past one and then they went off. And I felt a bit bad because I'd forgotten it's his dad's girlfriend's birthday the same day as his. So it had been her birthday the day before and we hadn't got her a card or anything. So I felt a bit guilty and I'm going to try and remember for next year. And she said it was a big birthday as well, so I doubly, felt doubly guilty. But yeah, too late now. Um, then on the, the Sunday, it was the football final. And we went round to our best friends. Um, the lads all watched the football on a screen with a projector. My best friend and I sat in the other room talking about far more important stuff. We knew how it was going because we heard a lot of yelling. Sometimes it was positive yelling, sometimes it was negative yelling. Um, and then when it got to the end of time, one or the other of our husbands would pop in and go, it's gone to extra time. It's gone to penalties. We thought we were never getting out of there, frankly. But we all know what happened. I'm not going to go over it. I'm not a football fan. I feel... I knew they were going to lose. And I don't mean that in a bad way. But so much pressure had been put on them to win. That, well, we all know pressure does not really do you any good, does it? What I will say is, though... What's happened since, the abuse that three lads in particular have taken, three youngsters, and I'm sorry, but 23, to my mind, that's still a, a baby. Just because of the colour of their skin is, it's apprehensible. There's no excuse for it. It's a game of football. It's a load of men chasing a ball. And if three of those men didn't live up to your expectations, it's not because of the colour of their skin. I'm sorry. It's a poor excuse for being a racist. One of them is the same age as my youngest son. And he's just played football for his country. And the other one is between the two ages.
I think they're 19, 20 or 21 and 23. It disgusts me. It should disgust any reasonable person, I think. But anyway, the world is as it is. It's not perfect. But I think we can all do one simple thing to make it a bit less imperfect by not insulting people purely because of the colour of their skin or their weight or what church they go to or choose not to go to. Live and let live, people. Second rant over. So that was Sunday. What did we do Monday? Didn't do anything Monday. Tuesday we had, my husband's a church warden, and we had the other church warden, our friend Alison, came over for lunch. That was lovely. Have a catch up. Um, then on the Wednesday, of course, we went to Cardiff. Again, it was awfully hot. I spent, I think I had about four outfit changes before we left the house because I couldn't find anything that was cool enough, but also covered enough of, of me up that I wouldn't get anywhere burnt. The trip over there was okay. I was very nervous. We have to go across, I think it's the Prince of Wales Bridge. Terrified of that thing. But it wasn't as bad as I remembered it. I kind of built it up in my mind, I think. So it was okay. Very, very hot. Um, they used to live in Malta. So the fact that it's hot doesn't particularly phase them. Um, and they've got, I think they're called sails. These things that go up in your garden. And they've got them up for shade. But of course we were there for so long. That the, and I was sitting kind of on the end, the sun came round and I've got one very, very brown foot and one arm that's considerably more freckly, I hope you can see. My left arm is a lot more freckly than my right arm because the sun was on me and I was boiling. And everybody kept saying, are you okay? Do you want to swap seats? But I didn't want anyone else to have to sit in the sun, which is daft because I'm supposed to stay out of the sun. For various reasons yeah but it was lovely we had a really lovely time I slept most of the way back my son slept most of the way back it's only a two-hour trip it takes us less time really to get to them than it does to get up to see my brother and my friends up in London so we should do it again soon um, the only reason we've not done it before now was lockdown um, but yeah Hopefully, if we stay out of lockdown, we'll be able to do it again before too long. Thursday. I don't think we did anything Thursday or Friday. I think we just kind of chilled at home. Saturday, we were meant to be having some old friends of my husband's over for a curry. Um, and they rang and cancelled because um, one of their parents had a bit of a medical crisis so that was a bit of a shame but in all honesty it was so hot it was probably a relief um, for all concerned because they'd have had to sit in a car for a couple of hours to get to us it's not fun uh, Sunday much the same to be honest we mainly lurked inside and tried to avoid the worst of the heat Monday, my husband had one of his bikes booked in for an MOT. So in 30 degree heat, he had to put on all his leathers and scoot off for a, an MOT. <clears throat> he has got um, an airflow jacket, which is it's made of a material called Cordura, which is very strong and abrasion resistant. But the bits of you that shouldn't slide down the road, so basically the front and the back, um, are made of a particular sort of mesh that lets the air come through so it's not quite as hot as it would have been wearing a leather or a textile jacket <clears throat> excuse me I've been rabbiting for too long already so that was that he was back to, to school he was back to work yesterday um, and here we are today 
So, been a little bit busy with visitors and visiting and what have you. But mainly the reason I've not done a great deal of knitting is the fact that it is so hot. I just can't. My hands get sweaty and then the wool gets damp and then the needles squeak and then I want to like use the needles to burst my own eardrums because it's so annoying. But I have finished a couple of things. They are socks. You were probably guessing that. I have finally finished these. Oh, I'm out of practice. Look, I can't figure it out what I'm doing. I finally finished these. These poor socks had they've had a bit of a life really. They started off, one of them I knitted, I knitted um, Crazy Sock Ladies Heel Toe Do Si Do pattern and I got down to about here, I was literally ready to start the toe, put it on a sock blocker to show you and thought it's a bit tight. So I tried, well, I tried to dry it on and it was way way too small. So that got pulled down and I started knitting these. There were three or four false starts for these as well. But now they are finished. So the main colour, the stripy colour, is Sirdar Heart and Soul. I can't remember what the number is. And this is Drops Fable. And again, I can't remember what the number is. I'm sorry. I'm yet again coming to you with half a story, but I'm hot. You'll have to forgive me. Oh look, I double as a fan, that's quite nice actually. Finished object number one. Finished object number two, more socks. These were meant to be for my son, but I think I might have messed up a little bit because if I put this sock, which is for me, against this sock which is for my son they are pretty much the same size and I'm a seven and he's a nine no he's a ten oh I have messed up I think but we'll see I'll get him to try them on when it's not so hot um, and see if not I've just won myself another pair of socks so these were knit these are scrappy socks and they were knit let me try and get them in scraps of Rico Re, Re, Rico Superba Bamboo. It's really hard to say when you're too hot. The blue that I used for the heels, toes and cuffs came from a pair of socks I knitted my daughter in law last Christmas. The rusty tan colour came from a pair for my husband also last Christmas I think and the beige was from some yarn that my son chose and sent me to ask for some socks so I've used up the scraps from those three pairs and I think they've come out really nicely they don't match exactly and you know what I'm all right with that I know it's a surprise isn't it I bet you expected me to be all kind of like <laughs> But it's okay, I like it. Even the heels and toes, because I didn't mess about um, getting them exactly the same, even they are scrappy. So I'm really, actually, really pleased with these. I, I, between you and me, if they don't fit him, I'll be quite pleased because I rather like them. Shh, don't tell. I didn't do it deliberately though. So that's my only finished object. Objects. There were two pairs. I've tried knitting. I mentioned I'm taking part in a little Lycax Christmas in July knit along. I've tried knitting my, my sweater. I'm knitting the Celiosis, Celo, no, Celosius. I get that wrong every time. Sweater by Jen Steingars. And I've done a, quite a bit more than when you saw me last. I'd hoped to get as far as finishing the pattern. 
but I haven't. Partly because it's too hot to knit on, but also, and I don't know if you can see this, let me. This bottom part should mirror the top exactly. Can you see what I've done there? I've repeated the same part of the pattern twice. So the bottom motif is longer than the top motif. And am I pulling it back to correct it? I am not. Because I don't think it notices all that much. It's larger anyway because you've increased. Oh, this is not working very well, is it? I don't think it really matters. I think it's only me that's going to see it. And it took me a while to notice it anyway, so it can't be that obvious. And if you've not seen the pattern, how would you know it wasn't meant to be like that anyway? So I'm just leaving it. But if I hadn't done that, which I think was doing an extra four rows, three or four rows, I would have finished the motif. But I'm nearly there. Let's try and pull one out straight. So I've got, I've done the double there. So I've got a plain row, a row with white, plain row and a row with white and then I finished the motif. Motif. My teeth need breaking in. I'm so out of practice doing this that it feels all a bit weird and awkward again. And it's only been a week. So yeah, not got on as far with that as I had hoped because it's just been too hot and it just sits all on you, doesn't it? And even in the evenings, I thought, well, perhaps I can get it done in the evenings. But we've been sitting out in the garden at 11 o'clock at night. And it's just been pleasantly mild. I'm not even going to say cool, mild. And we've been sat out there stargazing because it's so clear. We sat out Sunday night, I think. We saw nine satellites and two shooting stars. Could have been spaceships, I don't know. I hope they're not coming to take my youngest son back. It's entirely possible. Because I couldn't really get on with my with my um Celosius for the, the knit along. I cast on a couple of socks. I cast this one on. And I showed it on Instagram. I was doing a pattern and I didn't like it because it was it was detracting from the prettiness of the variegated yarn. It was kind of hiding it a bit. So I pulled it down and started again and I'm just doing plain stocking stitch. So this oh, clashes horribly with my shirt. This um, counts for the knit along because the yarn is called mistletoe and she's quite uh flexible as long as there's kind of a Christmassy what's the word I'm looking for thing I can't remember the word no it's gone as long as it's kind of Christmassy somewhere if it's for a Christmas present or whatever so this is mistletoe by Ange Knits and this is actually the second ball of hand dyed yarn I ever, ever bought. Or oh, it was a skein, really. Um, and it's taken me, where are we, July? Eight, nine months to get round to casting it on. Because it was so pretty and I just didn't know what I was going to do with it. And then I wanted a sock to cast on for the knit along and I was like, mistletoe, that'll do. So, main body is Anjanit's mistletoe, and the heel is, I think it's Drops Fable, yes, Drops Fable Unicolour 109. It's a lovely colour, I call it raspberry, it's one of my favourite colours. 
and you may have noticed if you have been watching the podcast for a while you have may have noticed this is once again top down and both of these socks were top down this one has an afterthought heel but this one has a proper I say proper they're all proper heels but this one has a slip stitched heel flap and gusset and so does this one and I meant to look up and see who it was somebody and you'll know who you were I was complaining that I didn't like this method for knitting the heel because of the ridge you get inside and somebody shared a video with me for how to pick up the stitches and not get the ridge and I followed it for this and there is no ridge at all so this has now become my favourite method for knitting heels can't remember who it was I will name you in the description box because that was very helpful there is a video that she um, shared with me and I can't remember the name of the lady whose video it is Rachel somebody I think you probably all know it this is probably no news to you but it was a great revelation to me and um, whilst not exactly life-changing it has meant that this has now become my favourite heel to knit. There is another pair. I'm hoping Amanda at Little Like Act Yarns doesn't mind people entering more than once. But even if I can't, no that's the wrong bag, even if I can't enter more than once, I don't mind because I will have socks. This one is only tiny so far. This is, the pattern is, I made it before for my friend when she was in hospital. Simple, and I think I decided it was called Skip Socks. Simple Skip Socks by Adrienne Koo. I hope I'm saying that right. And I'm knitting that in West Yorkshire Spinners. Signature four ply in Hollyberry, and I bought this last year. I made myself a pair of socks for Christmas last year, and I had twice this much left over. So I'm knitting a pair of socks again to enter into the Christmas in July mail with Hollyberry. And I'm really weird. If they're Christmas socks, I can only wear them in December. And preferably only kind of in the week up to and after Christmas. I know it's no revelation to you that I'm weird. You've probably noticed that. So I'm using Hollyberry for the main body. And then for the heels and toes, I might use this Woolrich. Truly Woolrich floor, four ply, and this is called Holly. And I can't remember if I use because I put my Christmas socks away with my Christmas jumpers and things. Can't remember if this is what I used last year or whether I used milk bottle. There's a strange noise coming from upstairs. Oh no, it's coming from outside. It's going. Ur, ur. Stand clear, vehicle reversing. And I thought it was my son in the shower. So you can imagine how I was confused. But yeah, so I'm probably going to use, <laughs> so easily distracted, Hollyberry for the heels and toes. And it will have a slip stitch. I'm really struggling with that today. Slip stitch heel again, because that has become my favourite. So that at the moment, that's all my whips. My um, friends are like flowers shawl. I've pulled down yet again. 
but that knit along goes on all through July and all through August. The Christmas in July knit along finishes on the 7th of August now. So I'm going to concentrate on these and then I can concentrate on the other shawl through August. I have yet to, to bring myself to cast the rocket tee back on that I had to pull down because there were 22 inches of positive ease. I don't know how I managed it. I have been doing maths and I don't do maths if I can possibly avoid it but I've been doing maths and trying to work out rather than look at what the pattern sizes say I know what tension I'm getting so work out what size I should knit according to what tension I'm getting because that's obviously where it all went horribly wrong and it did go horribly wrong if you remember if you haven't seen that episode I think it's entitled Knitting Disasters if you want to see what went horribly wrong. Uh, those were the only other things I had on the go, I think. Then there was my son's cardigan. My son, having had success with sending me a ball of wool and demanding socks, sent me some more wool and a pattern and demanded a shawl-collared cabled cardigan. Which puzzles all of us. He's not a cardigan wearer and we call him the wolf man because he runs hot all the time. It must be hell for him in this weather because he also works next to an enormous oven. It must be a million degrees where he works. Um, but yeah, he's got a very fast metabolism and he's constantly far too hot. So we don't really know why he wants this. So we challenged him, his fiance and I, and he said bless him I don't want to be left out <laughs> so sweet 29 so sweet so he sent me this wool which is gorgeous it I don't know if the colour's coming out quite well I think I'm trying to cover up myself so that it it kind of oh, I can't do it I mean look it would suit me very nicely take some of the colour out of my hair anyway he bought four balls and I said why on earth did you buy four balls the pattern asks for two 400 gram balls so he bought four 100 gram balls and he said I just saw four and got carried away I gave him the dye lot and he went back to the lady he bought this from and tried to get some more and she didn't have any more. So I went a trawling round Wool Warehouse and Derham Moors and everywhere, could not find any more of this dye lot. So I said to him, there are two ways we can handle this. We can buy some more that won't be the same dye lot and we might get lucky it might not be much different it's commercial yarn after all and there are ways I can deal with that because I could have alternated skeins or we can order the correct yarn for the pattern and you'll have to choose a different color and in the end that's what we did excuse me I'm gonna rustle gram ball of Hayfield Bonus Aran 20% wool in burgundy which is one of my favourite colours on him he's got the same colour eyes as me they're kind of a greeny grey but he's dark haired and this colour just looks stunning on him this and um, sort of a, a grey teal which is exactly the same colour as his eyes are my favourite colours on him. So I sent him a screenshot of all the colours that were available and he chose the burgundy. I have obviously not cast this on yet. I mean I'd done about that much. I'd done the ribbing and two repeats I think of the pattern. Um, 
for the back and I've not cast this back on because again hot 20% wool Aran it's just not happening at the moment it's meant to get cooler in a couple of days so perhaps over the weekend I'll get it cast back on he does know it's not happening terribly quickly I warned him that before it like you know turned into hell and I have been working on because when I finished the scrappy socks I had a little bit of the beige left and so I have been working on my scrap blanket and I think I've cast it off but I can uncast it off I think I finished the first strip so it's about five feet long so it starts there This is very hard to show you. Heaven knows how I'm going to cope with it once it's even bigger. And then the final bit was the little bit of beige left over. I think, I think it's long enough. But I'm tempted to just go another little bit. I want it to be a big, big blanket for my double bed. and I've knit it. it, it must be about five foot because I very, very scientifically measured it by putting the end on the floor and then holding the rest up against me while I was standing up and I'm fairly sure it's about five foot, it's almost as tall as me, it comes to there um, but I can easily sort of pull out the cast off and do another, another colour section whatever we'll see we'll see if I have the next scrap that I have to add to it we'll see if it looks better with this which is the bottom and it's going to join onto the side of the bottom or if it would look better on the top of this that will decide it I think so we'll just have to see what the next scrap colour is and that's it really that's all I've been up to knitting wise life wise what have you I am thinking about a knit along I've got two in mind I want to do one in October October is my birthday month um, I don't know whether to run them concurrently whether to wait till after Christmas because people are probably starting to think about if they haven't already Christmas presents and things they've got to make for Christmas presents so I might leave the other one till after Christmas um, but I'm certainly planning to do one in October so yeah i'm gonna have to get to grips with ravelry get to grips with ravelry before then i think because not everybody's on instagram um so there will be the opportunity to use instagram ravelry or to email to me i think is probably the easiest way um because not everybody's on all the platforms, are they? So, yeah, so I'm going to investigate Ravelry a bit more before October. And I will give you more details of that probably in September. But yeah, so definitely one knit along in October and the other probably after Christmas. January maybe. Maybe to run through February so that people can just have a little bit of time to get their Christmas crafting done, ready. But yeah, so there's that to come. Oh, and let me just confess now, it hasn't arrived yet, but it probably will do before next week. I've fallen off the wagon. 
I have fallen off the yarn buying wagon and it's your fault. I haven't done a giveaway this month because I knew I wasn't going to be filming for one week and I knew it was going to be busy and so yeah. So next month's give along I had to order some yarn for which meant I had to look at the ladies store and then something happened and that something resulted in some yarn being purchased that is not for you but is in fact for me and because I was on Etsy I looked in my little message box thing and it said that someone else was having a sale I feel I can't even look at you while I'm telling you this and so some more yarn happened I managed all of June and most of July nearly three weeks into July so, but it's your fault because if I wasn't buying yarn for a giveaway for you I would have stayed away from Etsy so I, I hope you all feel very 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 sorry not really because you don't make me buy you yarn and I knew I knew when I went on there to look for yarn to buy for the giveaway I knew full well what was going to happen but I did not control myself no one really to blame but me I'm sorry I tried to blame you I take it back it wasn't your fault it was mine hopefully I'll have it to show you next week But it turns up just after I've finished filming. That's happened before, if you remember. It's bound to. Anyway, that's it. That is all for today. I've shown you my finished objects. My work's in progress. Made my confession. Told you all about what I've been doing while I've been neglecting you. So I think that's all I have to tell you today. All that remains for me to do is to say thank you so much everyone who subscribes and who watches and who comments ah oh, that reminds me there's been a couple of occasions where people have commented and it comes up in my notifications but when i go to the episode to look for the comment i can't see it i don't know if that's because you've maybe deleted it or whether it's something that's going wrong with youtube so i just wanted to say Knitting Bandit, I know one of them was your comment on one of the videos and there was another lady who commented about my Brussels sprout story from Australia I think. I could see that you'd commented and I could read the first couple of lines but it wasn't showing on the video. So I just wanted to say I always always read your comments and I always, if I can't comment back, I will at least give it a like. If I haven't given you a like, I haven't ignored you, I just can't see your comment. So I apologise for that. Everyone who comments is very much appreciated. So thank you for that. Thank you to everyone who's subscribed recently. And thank you to everyone who subscribed previously and is still coming back to watch my answers. It's really kind of you and I enjoy your company. I know I can't see you, but I can feel you, if that doesn't sound too hippy-dippy. So I feel like I'm part of a new community. And I've just found, I've just discovered a lady. I don't know how I didn't come across her before. Um, Ruth loves to knit. And she is literally about an hour away from me, less. Yeah, in Oakhampton in Devon. 
I found her this morning and as soon as I finished messing about editing and doing whatever I'm going to do with this I'm going to go and go back and watch all of her videos um, I really like her so that's a recommendation for you Ruth loves to knit um, that's all I have to say I think I've done my thank yous please carry on watching I will try not to be quite so bad tempered next week I think it's going to be cooler next week so there's a fair chance I'll be less bad tempered and yeah I've managed to wear my bra through the whole thing who knew probably won't stay on much longer so thank you for watching thank you for keep coming back and I hope to see you again next week take care stay cool stay warm if it's not hot where you are and I will see you next week bye bye